glad to have her here. Two stories today that I'm going to share. Um, two women, and we're going to learn a lot about these two women. First of all, this woman who we have heard historically represents the face of poverty. And in our modern world, it is women who are the face of poverty. It's interesting that Jesus chose a woman for this story, a widow, because a woman without a husband was in dire financial straits in the days of the Bible. She had little to sustain her. And so she was in a very precarious situation. In our modern world, we try to provide some social net for women who don't have other means to support themselves. But of course, in the Bible, that was not the case. So this woman knew what it was to be poor. And she knew what it was probably to be hungry. And in fact, she were told by Jesus that she gave more than all the rich people because she doesn't just give a small percentage of her wealth, but she gave all. She held nothing back. Now, we need to pause here to talk a little bit about her gift because Jesus tells us that she gave more than all the rich people. But when we're dealing with numbers, which money deals with numbers, we all know that 10 is bigger than 2. And so when Jesus says she gave more, either Jesus is not telling the truth or he's a liar, which Jesus can't be a liar. So we've got to figure out what he meant by this statement. Because factually, by mathematical standards, he made a false statement. But he's Jesus. When Jesus says it, you better figure it out. So let's see what he's up to, and let's think a little bit about that. It must mean, at least initially, something like this. That occasionally, less is more. And occasionally, more can be less. But we're going to have to unpack that. So we're going to start by hearing a little video clip. Again, this, uh, this comes from my experience when I was in Washington, D.C. on Pastoral Appreciation Weekend at the African American Smithsonian. I was able to go there and I was able to get this video clip right off the screen. So the resolution may not be so great, but it is a clip once again, of Oprah, and I think you might be interested to hear what she's talking about. I think it was 1988 when I received my first check for $20 million. And I'm telling you now, my eyes water, because I remember closing the door to my office and sitting there staring at that check, thinking about where I'd come from and how I got there. I thought a lot about my grandmother, and I thought about her mother and her father. I thought about my great-grandmother, Amanda Presley. I thought about the journey that so many people had taken to get me to that point, that they could not imagine that I would be sitting in my office with a $20 million check. Closed the door, I locked the door, I sat there, I prayed and I cried. And I wrote on the back of the check what this meant to me in that moment and why and how I wanted to live up to what the $20 million meant and said to the world. $20 million. You notice she said, my first check I got for $20 million. <clears throat> she thought about her grandmother. She thought about her mother before that. She thought about the journey that had been taken to get her to that point. She 
went into her office and closed the door. And if you go to the museum, you can see her desk where she sat. Now, what I want to do today is say to Oprah, as all of us want to say, well, Oprah, all you have to do, all you have to do is follow the biblical imperative and go ahead and give one tithe of that, and that's just a mere $2 million. That's all you've got to do, and you're okay with God. We can give that kind of advice to Oprah, and we can also wonder about money. Today, Jesus might comment on this video clip, and he might comment on the widow. So we've got $20 million. We've got two cents. We've got a pretty good contrast here, don't we? Now, in the world of big money, and I don't know that world too well, but in the world of big money, I think $20 million is chump change. I think. Now, in the world of poor people, and I know a little more about that world, I can tell you two cents is chump change. Throw it out the window. So we've got two very interesting stories here. The woman looked at those two pennies, and she made an interesting decision. She looked at the two pennies, and she said, I can use these two pennies, and I can buy bread because I'm hungry, and that'll be good so I can eat today. That'll be good. I can do that. But then she turned around and she chose to take those two pennies and to put them in the offering box. I wonder why. I think that what she realized was that she was better to invest two cents in the kingdom of God and to trust in God to give her bread than she was to go ahead and buy bread for a day. I don't know if that's true, but that's my theory. She decided that she wanted to best invest her two cents worth, pardon the pun. And so she put it in the offering plate. She gave her money. She trusted that God would provide, that God would provide her bread. And so today we want to think a little bit about that. We want to think about investing. And I want to mention to us something that we already know. It's not that surprising, but I want to just mention to us all that we're sitting in this sanctuary, this special space, and this space represents the investment of a lot of people. And we could like kind of imagine that. We know that, you know, this stuff was maybe purchased by church members a long time ago. But I, I want to just mention that this actual site, right, right here where we are right now, this was the Wood Church. And I want to mention that the Wood Church was brought down the hill on the back of who knows what. And they actually took the entire church apart and then they rebuilt it right here on this spot. You know that, right? I mean, like, took all the nails out, rebuilt it right here on this spot. So this is holy ground. And then, then they upgraded. And then they built like this. Like, whoo! Big time. But that seems like old stories and old money. So let's just take it, let's just fast forward it. And let me just mention that I know the guy who invested in that screen right there. I know the guy who imagined that we'd figure out how to show you an Oprah video. And let me tell you, the guy who imagined it didn't even know there was such a thing as an Oprah video. That gentleman made an investment in the kingdom of God because he believed that somehow, even though he'd never seen a screen in a, in a worship setting, he believed he was given the vision by God, imagine that it could change worship. But he himself had never seen it. Now, I want to mention to you that if you would have been here on a cold day not so many years ago, you could have walked along the windowsills and run your hand. It would have been nice and wet. And the reason why it was wet was because all, this, all the windows were steel and they would, con they would condensate. And it would just, water would just be on all the windowsills. 
But one day we decide we've got to do some of these windows. Like, not only are they not working, but they're leaking. And, you know, we've got to figure this out. Well, every single one of these windows was an investment from a church member that imagined that we would have windows we could open. And that we, we could probably do a little better with windows that could be open and shut. And there was an occasion when we actually didn't have air in here. And people really, one time we, we lifted all the windows, still had worship. Now we're going to walk down the hallway and we're going to sit in a fellowship hall. And this isn't old, old school. You can look at the stone. This thing wasn't built 500 years ago. Okay, This was built in our modern era by people who had the vision of a place where we could gather as the people of God for fellowship. They made an investment in the kingdom. And then I want you to just imagine we're walking out the door and we're going to look at a big bus that we've driven all over the place with because people who had never even ridden on a bus imagine the investment of putting kids on a bus so they could bond and connect and putting seniors on a bus so they could take a trip. We like to think in terms of what do we do with two cents? It can't really buy that much bread. But if you give two cents to God then God can provide bread for the rest of your life. We do not invest in God and it is lost. It is always comes back fruitful. Always. God's always faithful. Every single time. The problem is we doubt. We fear. We don't, aren't so sure. There's a woman who has folded our bulletins. There's a lot of people who have folded our bulletins. I think I've even folded them a few times. There's a woman here who has come by the church to pick up the church secretary to take her home. There's a woman who's a member of our congregation who saw in the newsletter um, this image that uh, we have here. Our protect the house image. And she, she looked at the newsletter and she saw that and she said, golly, there's, that, that's just sad. There's just, there's just no red. And she saw that we were raising for the roof. And she thought to herself, she said, you know, my husband and I, we put a roof on our house. And she said, you know, that, that just gave me such comfort to know that we had a good, solid roof on our house. And then she, she said, you know, you mentioned there, Dan, that you got to collect shingles off the sidewalk and you got to pay people to glue them back up there. And boy, that's frustrating. Man, that's frustrating. Why, you know, it's just frustrating that you got to keep putting a Band-Aid on something. That's just money that you're throwing away. I said, yeah, it's true. So she thought about that. She prayed about that. And God said, well, then do something. And she said, well, I don't know what to do. God said, just give what you have. Just give what you have. The widow gave what she had. But what we want to happen is we want Oprah to give what she has. So we, what we're doing is we say, well, look, listen, Oprah, you got 20 million. What's 2 million? What's 100,000? Come on, Oprah. But what we forget is that God tells us consistently that you are Oprah. That it doesn't matter if it's 20 million or 2,000 or 2 cents. It's the same psychological challenge for every single person. And we want to just over and over and say, well... You know, there's people who got money out there they need to give. You are those people. So, um, so she wrote a letter. She sent a check. It's an awesome letter. Carrie read the letter. Get this touch your heart. And she said, God wanted me to give it all, but I, I don't know. I wasn't so sure what to do. So I just, I just didn't really know what all meant. So she said, I calculated what my income would be from disability. Uh, she's on disability. She said, I just calculated my income for 
a year. And I just decided I would write that check. And she did. She wrote that check. Her disability for a year. So <clears throat> I'm talking to her about this, and I'm like, well, what do we need to do? Like, how do we recognize this? And see, this is the point. This is the whole point. Jesus said, there will be those who give so they can be recognized. And I knew before I even asked her this question, I knew what she was going to say was, what? What's she going to say? Does she want you to know who she is? No. Because she is everyone here. She's all of us. She said, I would just love for people to recognize that they could do the same thing. And yes, we could. And she's right. So I read the letter and I showed it to Allison. Allison read the letter and we said, okay, we, we, got, we got to do something. We got to do something. So we wrote a check, special check, special amount of money, $400, $400. It meant a very special amount of money, $400. We wrote it right there on the spot. Showed a video two weeks ago about a lady living down in Mississippi. Did you all see that video? She decided to give $150,000 to the local college so that some of the African-American kids could go to college. And everyone, it's just awesome. But what we also had in that video was the mentioning that when the news got out about that gift, Local people matched that $150,000. So when they gave the gift to the university, it was for $300,000 in her name. They sponsored the very first student you saw in the video. Because when we see one person do this, it challenges every single one of us to say, what can we do? So I'm not interested in us celebrating one person who wrote this check. I'm interested in each one of us today saying, how can we be a part of this? And I think as I was praying about this this week, I said, my goal for the congregation would be 100% participation in this. That would be my goal. 100% participation. That when we finally put that roof on the top of this building, that we would all know as the people of God that every single one of us participated. And every single one of us includes every single one of us. And you don't have to get mad at me for asking for money. I'm not asking for money. I'm asking for you to show the same level of faith that that widow showed. And I don't know what that looks like for you. And I'm not interested in that. And you know what? I'm never even going to know whether you do this or don't. And I'm not even going to know what you give. I never have. That's not my objective. My objective is for us to start to realize that we're not going to just wait around and be angry at Oprah. But we're going to celebrate just like she did. She took that check. You know what? She prayed over it. I don't know what happened next. But we've got to do the same thing with what we've got. Now, you might decide that you want to send an email to this woman. That, that would be really nice, like a little email. Just, I, you know, thank you. Maybe send it to me and I forward it to her. You know, that would be great. We all want to say thank you for things. But we can't do that. You know why? She doesn't have cable. Hmm. Well, that's 100 bucks a month, average, maybe more. Hmm. So when you look up, you're looking at someone who gave up YouTube to put a roof on a building. How many of us would even give up YouTube for that? But she did. And just think about that woman two weeks ago that gave that enormous gift, and yet she lived in such poverty. And we say, it just doesn't make sense. Well, actually, it does. As Jesus said, blessed are the poor, because they're the ones that realize that a roof may be more important than YouTube. But the rest of us can't figure that out. I can't figure that out. 
And yet Jesus was right. Blessed are the poor. They'll show you the way. And yet we live in a society where all we want to do is bless the rich. They've already had their blessing. Scripture says that. It's the poor in our midst. So is it worth it? Is it worth it to put money into a screen, into a roof, into heating and air, into the basement that flooded? Is it worth it? How do we know that there will be rewards? I don't know the answer. I just know it's worth it. I know it. I'm the preacher. I've got eyes to see. I see how we are changing our world. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. My family's blessed. Every single one of us can have those blessings. All right, I need a helper here. You want to bring up our poster here for us, our thermometer? I got, um, I got this in my stocking. And um, I think it's called like a paint pen. And um, when I got it, Paige was like, Dad, that's not a pen. That's a paint pen. So you need to know that you can't use that, you know, like a pen. Like, you're going to make a mess. Like, she was, like, basically taking it away from me. But she's not here right now, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, I didn't see her. So, so we all want to know, you know, what, what was the gift, right? Because if we knew the amount, then we could get excited. And that would help us. Here, we're going to hold this up nice and high. No, you're not. You're, you're still there. Okay. And so we could ask ourselves a question. Maybe, maybe we came across here, and that would be, that would be exciting. That would be exciting. Maybe we would fill in here, and that would be exciting. Does it get more exciting as the line gets higher? Well, as the line gets higher, it just shows us that we could do it too. I mean, look at these numbers. These are really huge numbers, right? It reminds me of the bus. I remember seeing that number on the bus and thinking, can't do it. But we did. Okay, so it's going, okay? Does it get exciting when we hit $15,000? That's, that's the whole bottom of that ball. She doesn't even have cable. So that's what we've got to reconcile. We've got to reconcile the fact that someone filled in that. And actually, we're higher than that, because some people also gave last Sunday, and I wrote a check with my lovely wife today. Great. We're doing it. We're going to put a roof on this building. That's awesome. But buildings will come, buildings will go, right? It will not work. It will not further the kingdom of God if we put a roof on a building. It will only further the kingdom of God if we learn from what Jesus is talking about. We have to become faithful givers. We have to make the kind of choices that say, no, I'm going to be intentional about cable. I'm going to be intentional about my car. I'm going to be intentional about my phone. I'm going to be intentional about every cent I spend so that I can be intentional about how I direct my funds to change this world, right? So it's really a sermon about thinking even more about money, which seems so ironic. Aren't we supposed to not do that in church? Jesus talked about money because it is essential that we become people of faith, that we believe in the widow's might to sense invested in the right way, can change our lives and the lives of this world. Now, if someone's going to get mad, and you know, Kira's like, I can do that better than you. Don't, don't mess up there, Dad. <laughs> Probably Sarah Bell's having a fit, too. $15,000. 
She wrote this check for $14,000. Has anyone ever written a check like that? $14,000. It's awesome. But we're never going to know who she is. It doesn't matter because she is us. And we're going to do this together. It's awesome. It's humbling. It's beautiful. I told her, I said, um, we have this technology that Norm's developed where we can, we can send you the sermon. I'll email it to you. That wasn't going to work. But I'm going to send this sermon to her. I'm going to say, thank you for inspiring us. And I just thought maybe as we wrap up this sermon today that we should just show our appreciation. The only way we're going to be able to do that with a round of applause for this widow and her might. So let's close with that round of applause. And we are really excited.